Hi everyone, uh, I'm trying to show some video here of this PDP-8 that I've got in a huge rack. Fortunately, it's in the darkest part of my garage and with the door open, it's kind of washing out a little bit, but it's a pretty interesting unit. Um, bought this at an auction recently and uh, the main reason I bought it is because I knew it was a PDP-8, but I actually didn't know much else about it. Couldn't really see a good picture of it. Uh, when I saw a picture of it, actually, there were several pieces of black or, you know, clear plexiglass or darker plexiglass put over the front of all the wire planes here. And somehow those have been removed. And uh, now that I see what it is, it's actually uh, a large number of deck uh, flip chips. What, and what I'm guessing is it was controlling an assembly line. If you look inside of here, it's pretty interesting. There's just a ton of cards. And let me see if I can get it to uh, crank the ISO up a little. There we go. Get focused. You can see there's a lot of cards, a lot of R123, R202, R107, R151, uh, several W103s, which I'm sure just to extend the signal, uh, B134, R203. Uh, there's a lot of these relay boards in here, and then a ton, ton, ton of ribbon cable, and several other cards and connectors. Uh, these are the bus cables right here coming in from the DF32 drive. And uh, I guess these are the coax type that run down and just extend the bus down to the bottom chassis here. And it has a jumper going down to some more cards. And these ribbon cables that are all coming off of the interface boards and all these relays are moving over to this panel. And I'll show it a little better in a minute because I can take the back off. but. Seems like what's a lot in the this power or in this cabinet is a bunch of power supplies. There's five transformers on this side, and I think two on the other. One of them for the PDP-8, and I think one for the uh, the DF-32 over there. Maybe actually there's three on that side. Two for the DF-32, and one for the PDP-8 itself, and then five driving this mess. And a lot of power distribution and a lot of uh, chips. And see if I can get some better pictures down in here. It's a little hard to see, but. There's a ton of flip chips in there as well. There we go. Move up. On the inside. Let me move around to the actual front of it here. See if I can get a better shot of it. There's the PDP-8. There's another power supply. A regulator. There's the DF-32 itself. One drive, another power supply board up there, and then on the front, just back plane, back plane, back plane, back plane, almost the entire rack except for the bottom. There's one missing there. This one's dented in as well. I don't know if you can see that very well. It looks like something probably pushed up against the, the chassis at one time. Thankfully, it couldn't have hit in a better place because this particular back plane has very, very few cards in it. And I thought some were missing. There is one connector here that's not connected to anything at the moment. And I'm not 100% sure where it fell out from. It doesn't appear to be coming from down here or from this row here, but I'm just going to leave it out because I'm not 100% sure. But it, is, it does have a, a 12 marked on it, so I'm guessing that somehow, somewhere, should be able to figure out uh, where it goes. And also, I haven't been able to find any other manufacturer name. I've been trying to find out who else made these. And these are digital panels. You see right here, it says digital mounting panel 1943. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 of those in here. And they're pretty full, except for the ones in the middle here. Okay, so let's go around and I'll show you the actual PDP-8 itself. Let me pull it open. Now, unfortunately, when I got this guy, some critter had uh, actually built a nest right here inside of the machine. As you can see, the fans themselves are a little bit messed up and the nest was literally right here in the middle of it thankfully since it's a vertical oriented board I think you know most of the damage was pretty limited to the fans themselves they certainly seem to have taken the brunt of the damage the cards look okay and the connectors are gold you know certainly there's gonna be some work I think the main problem is the power cable right here it's gonna be hard to see this but it's actually damaged it's gonna need to be built rebuilt replaced so I'm not even going to try to power it on um, I thought initially it was wired for 208 or some other 240 or something like that because it's got a plug on it like I've never seen look at this guy and actually there's two of these there's one that goes to the PDP-8 
power supply and I guess branches off from there up to the hard drive and then inside we open up the door here inside there's actually a second one of those water hose sized uh, power cables with that same big connector and that same plug that may be like a 30 amp plug or maybe a 40 amp plug I'm not sure it's not one I'm familiar with but it could be one that's not used much anymore but there's the uh, digital power supply type 704 here is the actual DF32 drive itself. This is the 32 kiloword, I guess it's roughly 48K, I guess if you do the math on it, uh, hard drive, which still blows my mind that it only holds 48K, but I'm sure it's uh, long defunct. And over on this side, you can see a little bit more of the power regulators, some more transformers up there. There's another regulator mounted in here, another power supply that I didn't see, so there's another one here. And there's two more, which I'm guessing are for the DF38. And then the big one down there on this side for the PDP-8 itself. It's a big boy at the bottom. And you can see there's a little bit of rust and stuff in the cabinet. I think that's where the mess came from the critters. The other side doesn't seem to be as rusty. So they seem to have stayed over here. And I don't see anything chewed up, which is good. But it's definitely going to need some cleaning. And here's the actual back of the DF-32. And above it, regulators, power supplies. And there's the Mylar ribbon cables. I was looking at this earlier. They start down at the bottom of the PDP-8. And then I think it's the nine cables. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, wow. So there's eleven cables running there. And those go up to the back of the DF-32. Uh, over here. Let's see if they're running up a little bit the back here. Sorry about the focus. I've got it on manual. and This camera doesn't do very good zooming around on this thing. And then they split out from that and then they go up into the top corner of that uh, weird ass expansion that they have going on in here. So yeah, now that I've got the door open and the lights kind of shut, I'll shut this door, you can see the actual connectors that are coming off of that. Uh, let me turn the machine here. It's actually on wheels, so I can... I don't know. Well, I guess that was a bad idea. The tab on the door, I guess most of the rivets were broken out of it. And when I grabbed it there, it just snapped off. But I can re-rivet that. It looks like it's not a big deal. But anyway, um, let me move this door out of the way. I'll open this back up. Stupid garage door got caught. Got a handle for it. Yeah, it's a bad place for it. It's kind of running into the server. So anyway, let me uh, go in a little here so I can get a better shot of this thing. I'm not sure what sort of uh, connectors these are, but this is what I'm guessing the assembly line was hooked up to. Um, again, I, when I was at this auction, there were several conveyor belts, uh, a lot of old motors and other things that looked like they came off of an assembly line. And I also picked up in this auction the ASR33 terminal, which I'm pretty sure went to this machine. It was sitting right next to it and stuck in the back of this guy right down in here was a little folder and I'll have to get that here in a minute, but it had uh, what looked like some test typing off of something. I don't know if it was off the terminal or a different device, but a folder, a file folder there that said the Lily Ice Cream Company. Uh, there were several dates on the inside of it and I think it was like February something of 1970 that were stamped on that uh, envelope. So I'm guessing this came from the same terminal. It definitely has a deck card sticking off of it. And the card that would have gone to the terminal, I think is supposed to connect uh, right over here. And that empty slot above that card, if I remember correctly. So I guess that's where the terminal goes. Well, anyway, I'll uh, post this video. If you have any comments or info about this, I'd love to hear more. I think this might have been custom built by DEC uh, for the application that they had here. I really don't have any way of knowing. It also appears to have been untouched. Uh, there's a lot of masking tape. Let's see if it refocuses there. There's a lot of masking tape on the inside over the cards. I peeled a few of them off just because they were loose, and you can see that one's hanging down now, and they're no longer holding the cards in. But it really looks like nothing's been taken out of here in all these years. And also just kind of picking any random card that has an IC on it. I'll just pull this one here. It's 
the W113 out of the server. I'll try to zoom in on it here. Yeah, focus. And these have a date code of 6804, I believe. So most of the chips I've pulled out, I've seen 6808s, and I haven't looked at everything, but I'm thinking this was a pretty early 68 machine just from looking at the uh, construction of it, the chips in it. Most of these modules appear to be version A modules. This one's a version E, so I guess it's a little later. So anyway, it's amazing how good the connectors and everything still look. I guess they're gold, so it's to be expected, but it's still in okay shape. I think it's salvageable, mostly here, and probably pretty rare for what it is. Anyway, just wanted to give a quick video out there for everybody to see what else I could find about it. It's kind of interesting, too. It's got a little bit of information on how to boot it up. I think this is your, maybe their bootstrap information for how to get the hard drive up. And then there's the exact starting address. 4342. Looks like something was taped to the front of the machine for a while, but it's gone now. I don't know what was on there. Fortunately, I don't have the keys, but I do have the two panels that came off of the DF32 as well as the uh, PDP8 console itself. And I'm not sure what the serial numbers started at, but this one seems to be pretty low. The M26 uh, tag, which goes to the PDP8, has a serial number of 231. And the other tag, which is labeled D, I think D4MA, or no, DFMA, and that's off the hard drive. I actually saw that one fall off. That's a serial number 339. So, pretty low number. I'm not sure where that puts this machine, but definitely one from early 68, or at least built in early 68. I'm not sure when it was sold, but uh, interesting, interesting machine to say the least. All right, thank you so much.